you're obese, basically you're getting older, that is a recipe for secondary hypogonadism and uh, essentially loss of libido and secondary impotence. Now these things can all be avoided with exercise. Women do not have that option. A woman who is a, is a fanatical athlete will become amenorrheic, unattractive to her male, and basically can't breathe because she is amenorrheic. That doesn't happen to men. Our erections get better. <laughs> that we all go through. Now with catastrophic gonadal failure, reproduction is essentially the is dying. That does not happen to men. We can continue to bat and bowl and hit ball outside the Kensington until we are 90. And that was proven by a study in a blue zone. And the blue zones are essentially those parts of the world where people live the longest. One is Okinawa. The other one is a place called in Sardinia and Barbaraggia. The other one is in, um, uh, in uh, Loma Linda in California. And that is predominantly because there are seven day Adventists. They eat lots, drink lots of water, eat lots of nuts. And the other one is in Costa Rica, in the Nicoya Peninsula. The difference between that, that is the hot sun, that is the Caribbean. The difference between those men and the men in the other blue zones is that these fellas are not only old, they're breeding. <laughs> so, I, I, gentlemen, all I can say from this is essentially, yes, you must support your females, but I must, I, I must give you something that uh, I put down here. Uh, uh, Andropause is basically the unwilling wife whether it is as a result of endometriosis or church, because when you get 40 ladies, you all keep men away from you, and then tell them to can't go outside. <laughs> there was one shop in my office this morning, and I would have loved to have been able to write the prescription and send them to two girls who work outside my office at night. <laughs> but I could not do that. So it is, ladies and gentlemen, as you expect him to honor you, so you have to expect to honor him. You cannot deny him sex and treat him as though he's a little boy when he comes to approach you. And then one Sunday morning, three months hence, the children are out. You now feel a little frisky because you see something by CNN and you want to jump on your mind. <laughs> so you jump on your mind, he's unable to perform. And then you know what you do, you're not even gracious with it. You see right there, three months ago, you beg him for this and let the child use it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a further lash along the slave and it propagates and builds up psychogenic impotence. Because for a man, a man can say, you know, I've had 20 or 30 partners, you know, and that's true. But if a woman has three or four, she's a slut. And, and so, women are forced to lie. So you start up the relationship on a very shaky foot. A very shaky foot. And of course, I can't help but mention that religious teaching is also one of the disincentives to people using protection, especially the condom in relationships. Many of our religious institutions are essentially so patriarchal. And so women are taught that it is good to be submissive to your husband. Even where a man's sexual behavior, even in instances where a woman may know that her man is having sex with other persons, She's certainly not supposed to withhold sex from him. And how dare you introduce a condom? You're questioning my credibility. You're questioning my, my, my integrity as a man. And, and it, the reverse of that is also true because when uh, men introduce the issue of protection to their women, the women often say, oh, I'm clean. I got, what does that mean? And so we really have to talk about, we have to talk about it. I, I Endometriosis know. will mimic several other conditions. And since this is a, a, a group where most of us are of color, uh, women of color have a very high percentage of fibroids. And women of color who have fibroids who have pain should be thinking that they have endometriosis that's causing that pain and not the fibroids. I started preaching that a couple of years ago when I got to Barbados and I think I have some converts. <laughs> um, I think in, in, in answering the question, what do I do, how do I manage to deal with 
my woman who has endometriosis? There, there are probably a couple of things we can say. Number one, if we know she has it, I think what the man can do is to try his best to get educated about what it is. Um, what she can do is not to be depressed that you know there is no cure for endometriosis, but understand the various items that we can do to really give her her life back, because there are various uh, surgical and medical treatments that are available, and women with endometriosis need not suffer every month with pain. They need not run away from their husbands when he wants to have sex, uh, because we can improve that. But having said that, if you are being treated by someone who knows nothing about minimally invasive surgery, uh, you may want to rethink that, particularly if you have pain every month, uh, even if your pain is not every month, uh, because. If your physician is not doing minimal invasive surgery, he is not as well equipped to diagnose endometriosis. The best way of diagnosing it is by laparoscopy. And we have a group of women who have had the pain, who have had the fibroids, who had the hysterectomies, who still have pain because the hysterectomy was done the traditional way and the endometriosis was not identified and they still have pain after the hysterectomy. So there are all kinds of ramifications of that disease. Now hotline, we service men and women, so we get lots of calls from men who are speaking to issues who, who might, might say that they are, they're not able to deal with a woman because the woman has withheld, withheld sex from them or the woman is not giving in to them or something like that. What we have to try to do in helping men to understand violence um, and to dealing with violence is not to blame the women's organizations because they focus on violence against women. From 1945, the women's organizations around the world were advocating about violence against women. And they, they, they came together, they formed organizations at the, at the local level, they formed organizations at the national level and at the international level and develop strategies to get people to recognize that violence against women is wrong. If we are trying to change the laws or we are trying to get people to recognize that men too are victims of violence, I am encouraging the men to accept responsibility for their lives as well and to form the group to educate themselves and educate them, um, the, the women why that too is wrong and help them to recognize that yes, it took years before women were going to a court or would say they didn't even know that they, were, that they were abused. And they were ridiculed and they were laughed at and people said that it was their fault, that they didn't know how to treat their man good and how they should dress and make sure that their man be, don't beat them and don't go out. I'm suggesting that likewise that men need to not be afraid, not be ashamed of, of being abused by their, by their partner, recognize that it is wrong and start to develop programs to advocate against it. Be, be a faith. We have had women attorneys, we've had women ministers, we've had women at all levels who expose themselves so that people would feel more comfortable coming forward. And I'm suggesting that men too need to do that. Come forward, identify with the issue and identify with the issue and let others know that it is wrong. Often, people say, I want to marry someone like my daddy. People also say, hell no. <laughs> we are also influenced by our gender and the way in which we from childhood are treated and expected to behave, the things that we can and cannot do as men and women and societal expectations impact upon our behavior very significantly. We also have to remember that people are at various cycles in their life. Who you are now at 20 should not be the same kind of person you are and you should not exhibit the same kind of behaviors at 45 or 60. And where we are 
in that whole cycle of life will determine also um, how we act. And at each stage, there are different needs. <coughs> there are different developmental tasks. And it is a lifelong process. When people come to me in therapy, I always have to remember that it is not just what is manifest that is important, what is in front of me, what they've done or not done. And I have to remind partners that sometimes our actions are not even in consciousness. There's something going on behind the scene that is driving us. I said to my students that it's like the operating system of um, our computer. We are great at typing out what we need and we enter our commands, but behind the scene in the Windows environment, there's a, a lot of stuff going on that we don't know or don't understand. And the same thing happens with us as individuals. The first one is she needs to feel secure psychologically in that she needs to feel safe around me. She needs to feel as if she could come to me and I would listen. She needed to feel secure emotionally. She needed to know that I love her. She needed to know that I, my, my touch and my, my um, affection was genuine. A big one, she needed to feel secure financially. In, in, my, in my family, my wife, I make sure my wife don't worry about the bills. She don't go worry about groceries. I go to the grocery store, I buy all the groceries. She, she, she doesn't have to go and pay a bill, I do that. Um, if she wants something, there's money stored in the house, she just takes it up and she rolls with it, make a note of it, and she goes. Right? <laughs> she feels secure in knowing that if she needs to get somewhere, and all of this is tied up in the finances, if she needs to get somewhere, there is a car available. She feels secure that she knows there's money in the bank and that we as a family are progressing, that our finances must increase. She, she feels secure to know that there's an investment there, that with our little baby that's coming, she doesn't have to worry about how our child will get this and how our child will get that. All right? And another one was she just needed to generally feel secure. And this is an area which some men fall down in. Um, my wife and I, we, we courting for a long time. Um, best friends for 10 years before we got married. Um, one of the things that she, she really likes is when I'm clean. When I'm healthy. I go to the gym, I work out, um, um, we, we exercise, I exercise a lot. <laughs> um, it helps in other areas. Um, you don't get tired as quick. Um, she, 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 and, and in my own general well-being, and that general security also in knowing that her husband is furthering his education. And I'm increasing my intellectual capacity. Right? And then one of the main ones, and I know this is, 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 is very important to her, is that she feels secure spiritually. My wife melts when I just wake up and say, sweetie, or something is going on and say, sweetie, say, sweetness, let us pray. And she just goes, oh, I just love you more. You know, um, <laughs> and, and it